So to take the time case off, uh, first of all we need to take the points and the well, contact breakers, points, contact breakers, same thing, uh, off and then the advanced retard unit underneath them. The advanced retard unit, as on many bikes, is fitted the, uh, to the uh, end of the exhaust camshaft or on some bikes, if only got a single camshaft, they're normally just on the camshaft. But, uh, oh, we've got electronic ignition. Uh, what's that? It's like a Lucas Rito, I think. I'm not sure. Not sure. Well, that's interesting. We've got electronic ignition. Okay, that's good. That's good. What's bad is these are the uh, pillar bolts here that uh, hold the electronic ignition all points in place, depending on which one we've got. Um, but there's only one pillar bolt on this particular occasion. So we're missing a pillar bolt. Right, I'm going to undo this pillar bolt. Yeah. Normally you just loosen it to uh, adjust the ignition timing but obviously we're removing it so we're taking the uh, pillar bolt right out and there should be two pillar bolts we're missing one and that's okay so let's have a, oh no it's a boy branson boy branson electronic ignition so we've got the uh it's an igniter plate underneath uh like the firing plate uh, it's got magnets on and it's these that fire the ignition and so all we need to do is just to remove that plate I was expecting to find points under here it's been an old bike but um, it is indeed uh, an electronic ignition good so much like the advanced retard uh, mechanism you've taken the bolt on that holds the back plate on and now we're going to put a bigger bolt in this see these threads here they don't go in those threads they go straight into the exhaust camshaft so we put a bigger bolt in there and that will help us get that plate off okay so we've uh, bolted a, a bolt actually into this back plate the original bolt actually goes through the back plate and screws into the exhaust camshaft. This one screws into the uh, back plate and sits on the end of the exhaust camshaft. And uh, I've done it up, and I think we, I've done it up till I think we're just about. It's just tight, yeah. It's just tight on the exhaust camshaft now. And so that bolt is trying to pull this back plate off. We're going to help it now that it's up tight. If we give it a little tap, hopefully, there, off it comes. Because you've got a taper fit. That's a taper that fits into the end of the exhaust camshaft. And normally, it's held in place with this smaller bolt that screws into the end of the exhaust camshaft. But this, these plates are deliberately threaded with a, a bigger thread. And so when you want to remove it, you screw the bigger bolt in until it butts up against the camshaft tight, give it a tap, and off it comes. So that's exactly the same as we would do if this was advanced and retired unit uh, on an original point system. Right, with that, uh, that removed, that means we can now undo the uh, time inside casing. So I've got my my mega tool here okay so what we've got to do now is remove this uh, timing case now the problem is how are we going to do that because it's almost certainly stuck on with gasket goo and 
there's nowhere to get behind to, to, to pull it off. There's nothing sticking out for us to get hold of. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is damage the casing. So um, the first thing I'll do is I'm going to remove the uh, inspection plate here. This is the plate that you use for the timing. And that means I can get my finger in for a start and uh, that'll give me some something to pull against. And I'm also going to heat with my blowtorch. I'm going to heat all the way around in where the casing joins the crankcase. Because if this has got a liquid, um, a more modern gasket like well seal, that will then help to liquefy the gasket, soften it, and it will come off. If it's got a hardening gasket on it, then that won't help at all. But these can be a nightmare to get off. Don't forget, there's also a couple of dowels in there to locate it, so you can't like just knock it sideways because there's locating dowels that will stop it going sideways. It's got to be pulled off. So I'm going to uh, take this uh, timing plate off and get my blowtorch on the, this uh, uh, joint and then we'll, we'll see how we get on from there. Okay, I've uh, removed this uh, inspection uh, cap here which is what's used for timing the, uh, checking the ignition timing, setting the ignition timing. Uh, and I've heated all around the case with my uh, blowtorch all around the joint and then just at the back just here the case just overlaps very slightly so there's just a little edge so you never ever use never ever ever use metal ever ever but I can just get a piece of wood on that edge yeah. tap it comes our case. Well, I'm happy. There we go. A bit of oil. There in all its glory is the timing case. So this is like the alternator. So that's a stator. It's got all the wires in it. And that's the rotor which is the magnet. And you rotate a magnet within wires, it creates a current, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and it's that, it comes out and that charges your battery. So that's the alternator altogether. Two separate parts, stator and rotor. And we've got the uh, uh, inlet cam there and the exhaust cam there. Right, we're now getting ready to uh, dismantle the contents of the timing case or timing chest so the first thing we're going to do is to remove this stator which goes around the rotor held on uh, by three nuts and so hopefully using our mega blaster it should come apart without any fuss And there's spaces behind each of those thick, very thick washers uh, behind each of those nuts. Right, let's see if we can coax the dear old stator off. Oh, yeah. And then we've got to feed the, feed the wire through as it comes out. These wires are notoriously brittle and we might have to change the stator if the wires are, are particularly bad and they can be. They get this uh, combination of the heat and the oil. Right, I've uh, eased uh, the sort of rubber cover off uh, the cable seal nut as it's called and getting that rubber getting this rubber seal off has meant that it's coming through a lot easier I'm going to cut the uh, uh, connectors off the end of the wire 
because I know that this wire it's not a great idea to do that generally but I know I'm gonna to have to replace this wire and certainly the connectors have got to, they had exposed wire so they, the connectors need a replacing anyway the next thing we're going to do is to remove the rotor here which is held on um, by the rotor nut obviously and it's got a tab washer now in order to undo this I'm gonna to have to lock the engine otherwise obviously again the engine is just going to turn uh, and in order to lock the engine I'm going to put a bar through the center con rod uh, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing uh, first thing to notice just to get slightly ahead of ourselves is that there are six marks timing marks on the on the rotor nut you actually need three marks if you've got points because if you've got points each piston each cylinder is timed individually so you need a timing mark for each cylinder and then there are six because Triumph PSA changed the position of the rotor on the crankshaft halfway through production so the timing marks are in a slightly different place so what they did they produced rotors with all six marks on there's A marks and B marks and so depending on what crankshaft you've got then you either time to the three A marks or the three B marks okay so what I've done is I've got the uh, extension bar from the socket and run it through the center con rod and uh, then uh, heavily packed the top of the crankcases and obviously uh, Put a lot of uh, insulating tape to protect the eye of the con rod and I'm now <clears throat> going to see if we can undo this rotor nut and we'll see all right while we're out mm. Well, well, well. It's all right. I thought it was something strange. It's brought the whole, uh, the whole stud out of the, out of the crankshaft, <laughs> rather than the nut coming off the, uh, coming off the stud. The studs come out of the crankshaft. But same result. Right. Having successfully removed the rotor nut, we've now got to ease the rotor off the crankshaft. It's not a uh, taper. A hard taper fit it's uh, a slide on fit but obviously it's often tight as this is so I'm just going to try and ease it off with my dear old tire levers just gently it's a very strong magnet obviously just be very gentle there we go it's tight but not you know, you're not gonna unless you start levering against the casing which it's not advisable it's not it's going to leave us off okay. You're not going to damage anything. There we go. Oh, complete with a nice bit of orange gasket goo or something at the back. Just uh, notice that this is uh, a rotor uh, that they use for the bomb bill. So that's the original, original timing mark. And so normally a rotor is fitted that way round. And Bonville's has their 360 degree uh, timing, the both pistons at the top. So there's, there's only one timing mark, which does for both pistons. Um, and then rather than make a new rotor for the uh, triple, they just turned it round and sort of etched the, uh, the, the six marks on the back. And if you can see, then we have A and B markings. There's a camera picking that up. So you've got three that go with uh, B and three that are marked A. So it depends which crankshaft you've got as to which markings you use. But we'll come to that when we reassemble the engine again. And just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos, then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos and that covers restoring the whole bike, not just the engine. Uh, and that's available from all... Uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, 
into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it uh, and it should come up.